ladies and gentlemen. Joining me now is a man that went to school at Ole Miss. If he was to focus on just golfing, he'd be in the PGA probably in three months from now. He can pitch a baseball 87 miles an hour, on, and on Sunday night football, he was the only man to score a touchdown between the Bears and the Rams. Offensive tackle, offensive lineman, athlete, white guy, Bradley Sal. Wow, what an introduction, man. I appreciate it. You see that? A couple of round of applause What's there up? for you, too. How are you, brother? <laughs> good. How the heck are you, man? Life is good. I'm getting a little bit older over here, but so are you. I had no idea you were on the goddamn Bears. You quit social media. Yeah, uh, I had, it was too, too distracting, man, so I um, gave it up. Then, yeah. But, no, but I don't think anybody knew I was on the Bears, actually, until I, until I did that. Well, the issue was I kept up with your beautiful family on the Internet. You were with the Colts. How many years were you with the Colts? I was there one year with you. Okay, so you're with the Colts. You are a swing offensive lineman, basically, out of Ole Miss, and then you end up in Arizona, right? Yeah, I was in Arizona for um, the Colts for one, Arizona for three, then I went to Seattle for one, I've been at Bears for two. Look at you. You're like a real journeyman. Yeah, oh, yeah, just, you know, all over the place. <laughs> what have you learned? What have you learned about the NFL from when I met you your first year in the NFL to now? How, what have you learned from going to different organizations and things like that? Have you learned anything awesome? Dude, ev everyone's different, obviously. And then, you um, know, yeah, more you can do, man. Like, freaking, I just try to do a little bit of everything so they keep me around. You, you, lo know? you long snap? Yeah, you know, you know, last year in the preseason, um, I ended up long snapping whenever Pat Skelts tore his ACL in the first um first quarter i ended up having to snap us through the game and it's like 95 degrees my hands were taped up and i ended up um you know having to convert to a long snapper for the game was there any conversation ever so, about you potentially being a starting long snapper no touchdown by the way if you become a starting long snapper i know i know i did make a tackle though in the only game that i a long snap um yeah and eric's <laughs> coach like always wanted me to do it but i didn't um i don't know man i didn't want to didn't want to do it Okay, Club Dub has swept the NFL world by storm. The Chicago Bears locker room becomes a nightclub after a win. It's Club yeah. Club Dub. Yeah, it, it is, dude. It's, it's, it's actually unreal. Whenever you get in there, it's you know all the lights are out, strobe lights going, and um, that's actually the time to practice your dance moves. Like. <laughs> nobody can really see you so like that's when i was like preparing if i ever had my day i was like dude i can just do whatever right now <laughs> and practice for it so i actually got a lot of a lot of reps in doing that so it was, it was actually great practice to be honest with you whenever you celebrated there you looked good i commented i said great dance too a lot of people i don't think i don't think you got enough love on the dance because the catch caught everybody by surprise we'll get into that in a little bit but your dance there was rhythm in there. There was you didn't look like you didn't know what you were gonna do. You looked good in there. Listen, bud, hey, as soon as as soon as I had my chance, dude, that's my one moment. I may never get that again. I mean, honestly, if nobody would have touched me, I was gonna drop it down too. Like <laughs> I, was about to two, I, was, I was about to hit two bang bangs down, but I got hit from behind. So um yeah, I was I was about to let it rip. It, it was not about to stop there. <laughs> oh your coach went on Scott Van Pelt. And he said that in warm-ups, you stand right in front of him and throw a football like 80 yards and then you catch the ball in practice. He said he knew if the ball was anywhere near you, you were going to catch that. Have you been lobbying for that play for a while? Oh, yeah, dude. You know how it is. I, yep. You got you to gotta freaking beg. I mean, I was throwing myself on him, you know, just making, <laughs> making him see it, you know. So, I mean, he was off by like two yards. I mean, I throw like 78 or so at practice. <laughs> Pre practice, but yeah, I make sure I make sure he can. Um, I make sure he sees it though. So I mean, just in case, you know how it is, Pat, dude. Like, just get me on the field some kind of way. I don't care. I'll, I'll cover a kick, dude. Like, I don't care. Let's let's just get me out there. You're a freak athlete. I, I, it's it, it was very surprising to see how smooth of an athlete you were. We put a video up the other day. Uh, I got a chance to pull some of your videos from your old social media posts and find them. On, you golfing, dunking pitching snapping and then this weekend you're catching a football do you think you're the most athletic offensive lineman in the game um i mean i think overall like sport to sport like i'll crush every other lineman at golf that won't even be close by the way um, i think that is true are you scratch 
Yeah, I got I got to a plus one, about a plus point four the um, year, probably a year and a half ago. Um, that that, but I had to work extra hard. Dude, I was a terrible dad during that time. I I, I had to practice like every day, but um, <laughs> bad dad of dude, the year. Yeah, but yeah, as far as like golf and like some other stuff, there's probably some dudes that can play some basketball a little better than me and stuff. But I, I think overall, I'm I'm up there. I would like to say I'm up there. It was a great snag, man. You looked very athletic when you went up there and got that. Uh, would you have – I think in my mind, you would rather have it out there than at your body, like an easy one. Yeah, that's what I told him. I said, just put it high so I can go up there and, like, snag it. Um, but, dude, people don't even realize me and you did this first, like, back in Indy. You remember the fake field goals we ran yes. and stuff? Dude, we were, we were snagging that seven years ago. Like, this is, this is old news, you know? I'll tell you what. I talked about that after – it happened. I said, in practice, when you run a fake that involves an offensive lineman, you always throw it to the offensive lineman in practice because the reaction from the offensive line, the defensive line, the entire team is electric. And you, anytime you were in, I would throw the ball to you in all the fakes in practice. Yeah, and it dude. was always a celebration. Always. Yeah, we did it multiple, we did it multiple times. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. And Grixon fired me. <laughs> hey. Hey, he fired a lot of people, man. He ran my ass out of there too for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he was watching the other night. I hope he was watching the other night. Uh, I haven't still haven't got a te- I still haven't got a text from him yet though. But well, you know, he was, I'm sure he was watching. I assume everybody. It was Sunday night football. That game, your team has become a good fucking team all of a sudden. What has Khalil Mack really done inside the locker room? It seems as if it's been a a full transformation. Dude, he's literally. So I, I feel like I'm being honest. If Jesus was like a football player. He would be him and Khalil Mack would be like that's why I feel like he would come down from heaven looking like dude he is it's Christmas the dude dude like I have I have to block him every day and like he is as freakiest like the freakiest athlete I've ever had I mean it's 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 crazy dude like is he this good? dude is an absolute freak is he good in the locker room too it seems like the team has rallied around him. yeah great dude like super good dude man really, kind of quiet pretty humble like doesn't talk a whole lot like just a good dude. Like he's almost like he has like the same. Remember how Robert Mathis was just kind of quiet, yes. but just an ass kicker. Yes, that's 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 how that's exactly his exact same personality. What goes on in the Chicago Bears locker room week to week? We got cards, we got dice, we got cornhole, we got anything like that, or is it all full? You know what? No, no, no cornhole. Like we we used to crush the cornhole, yeah. but we actually have some little basketball goals in there, and Let's like go. the balls are like. I mean, you can't even put them in your barely put them in your hands, but we shoot shoot a lot of basketball. Um, it's a little bit of cards. But them, you're typical, just typical how it is. The team seems to be trending in the right direction, and Chicago is a city that needs a winning football team. They, they've been yearning for it forever. Is the culture feel like it's going that way, especially with the fan base as well? Yeah, man. Honestly, like this is one of the best um, best cities to win in. I mean, it's, just, it's been incredible. When we go on the road, I mean, it looks like a college bowl game. Like half the, half the stadium's Bears, the other half's the other team. I mean, they travel crazy, and um, I mean, they, our, our GM and stuff, he did a great job this offseason. He brought in a ton of players, brought in a coach that's, like, fun, has a good offensive scheme. I mean, it's really been just a perfect storm for us, and I, I really, you look at our, I mean, three of our losses are by a combined seven points. I mean, we could easily be whatever and oh, 13 and oh, whatever, 13, 12 and oh, whatever. Um you know, and then, and then our other loss was about seven to the Patriots. So we lost four games by 14 total points. So we've been in every game and, um, you know, it could be even better than this now. But, yeah, it's, it's a good start. Well, way to put your staple on this incredible comeback season for the Bears with an incredible electric touchdown and dance. Too bad we missed a pa-pa on the ground down there. <laughs> but I'm proud of you, Yeah, man. I know, dude. I swear I want to hit that. That's all right. Next one, next one I'm going to get some space. Hey, keep, facing some leg room. I'm hitting the pow pow. Hey, keep working the coach over. Let's keep those plays coming. Uh, an offensive lineman scoring a touchdown is good for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. That'd be awesome. How's the family? They're good, man. You got, I got a freaking little boy now. He's five months old. So Presley is almost seven. Piper, oh, I'm five, and my little boy's five months. Does little boy have a P name? Does he what? You said Presley Piper. Does the boy have a P name? And- Oh, yeah, Paxton. Sorry. I thought maybe we were going Patrick right there. I thought maybe you named little baby Patrick. You know, it would have been Patrick, but then, you know, the whole Patrick Reed thing with, you know, getting in and all that drama. So I just didn't want to name him after Patrick Reed. (laughs) I forgot you're like a diehard golf fan because he's such a big golf fan. (laughs) Hey, hey, this new younger gen. Did you watch the Phil Mickelson Tiger thing? I did. I didn't watch the whole thing. Like I feel like that was like the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. You know, it was like a little bit overdue. So 
So like, I, I just want, I want to see them play at the masters in the final group. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to see them playing for some phony money. Like, um, so yeah, I did. I watched like the highlights and stuff, but I didn't, um, I didn't I, get into it too much. Like, I heard, like, I, heard a, a real, a real I, fan. I heard it was terrible. Everybody said it was really bad entertainment. They said they weren't talking to each other. Would you ever, I've said, I said this earlier, you're a really good golfer. You said you were a terrible dad, but if that was your job, whenever you retire from football, whenever it is, let's say it's 10 years from now, uh, will you ever think about pursuing like a sort of professional golf? You're the only guy I think I've ever seen that could do it as a football player. So I don't know, man. I see that. I, I, I think I'd want to do that. And then all of a sudden we're out at golf club, in Indiana and a seventh grader crushes me. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, you remember those kids we play with yeah. at golf club, Indiana? Yes. It's like a kid going to Duke or something crazy. And he crushes me. And I'm like, all right, I just lost a seventh grader. I'm definitely not going to go pro. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and then I've, I've played with a couple of pros that are really good. So, I don't know. It would take, like, some, take like some serious couple of years of coaching and, like, honing some of this stuff in. But I, I wouldn't mind just going and gambling and beating all the amateurs for the rest of my life, though. <laughs> Such a hilarious move. And now whenever you beat those amateurs, they can say that they lost to a man that's going to touch down on Sunday night football for the Bears. Bradley Sal, I'm so thankful. Tell everybody I said hello. Tell the family I said uh, all my best wishes, T's and P's, and I hope you continue to crush it, my brother. Appreciate it, dude. Miss you, man. Hey, I miss you too. Keep crushing it.